Hi everybody. So good, welcome, uh, good evening. I can see lots of you joining now. Um, the chat should be, hello, <laughs> got some waves already, fantastic. Um, the chat uh, at the bottom should be enabled and we would love to know where you're joining us from. Let's see how, uh, how international we are this evening. Uh, so pop a hello in the chat uh, and let us know where you're um, dialing in from. Um, and we will say hello properly as we go through. Thank you. Just seeing lots of waves now, everyone raising their hands. Hello. Um, so thank you very much for joining our workshop this evening. Um, I'm Claire from Colpens. Uh, some of you will have seen me before if you've been joining our workshops. And our workshop this evening will be led by the incredible Nick Stewart, who some of you may know as Quink and Bleach. Um, there will be a few ink related puns. Sorry, not sorry for those. Uh, they are very much intended. Um, I'll be handing over to Nick in just a moment, but before I do, the usual bits of um, housekeeping to cover off. And uh, I'm just going to have a little check of the numbers and see if you are all joining. Yes, lots of people joining. Fabulous. Um, so the session is being recorded. Um, and hello, we've got some people joining from far and wide. Uh, so the session is being recorded, but don't panic. All the cameras and the sound are switched off for all of you for the duration of the session. Um, if you have any questions, and we really do love uh, questions, then please post them in the chat function, which you're all getting to grips with right now, or post them in the Q&A, which is also at the bottom of your screen. Um, Anna from Colt Pens and myself will be filling the questions as best we can, and where possible, we'll be very gently interrupting Nick uh, to ask some of your questions directly as we go along. So if there's anything that we can't answer, we might ask for your details and we'll take the questions away and we'll we'll come back to you. Um, so bear with us, because uh, there's just the two of us and, and Nick uh, presenting. So we will do our very best and you'll hear my voice pop up with some questions as we go through. We anticipate the session's gonna last uh, about an hour. So settle in. And the last session that we did with Nick uh, last year was a bit longer because we had so many questions as we worked through. Um, so, without further ado, I give you the fantastic, sorry, the amazing, and the inksome, uh, drum roll please, Nick Stewart. And I'm going to hand over to Nick now, switch our screen over. Uh, so, I'm sure many of you will know Nick already, but Nick, for those people that don't, I think it'd be fantastic for you to introduce yourself to everybody and tell us a little bit about where your ink fascination began. Hi everyone, again, um, I'm Nick, and yes, I have this strange um, interest in fountain penning. Um, it began um, nearly seven years ago, and it's really about exploring something which is a little bit quirky, and just to see how far um, I can push it. And it's not just me, there's a lot of other people out there now who are also pushing it as well, which is which is fantastic. Um, yeah, it, it seems to be one of those mediums that um, is little known about. Um, and the more we sort of investigate it, the more giving it seems to be, which is which is quite magical. And I think that's where the addiction just gets better and more pronounced. And so seven years down the line, um, we're still progressing. Um, the ink manufacturers are coming up with different products all the time and they're quite innovative. I've just been looking at octopus inks, which, which have, um, sorry, who have just produced a, a range of writing drawings, which are pigment based, which means they're waterproof and they're very permanent. And in conjunction with that, I'm using their inks with dye based inks and already getting some incredible results, which I'm very excited about. And I'm sure that we can have a chat about that a bit later if you want to, or we can have a look at that sort of stuff at another time. But tonight we are looking at um, sheening and shimmerings, which I know a lot of you are looking at, and I know that they're all the bars at the moment, and they are very pretty to use, but they're even more exciting to use for illustration. Um, there's nothing quite like them out there. Uh, they, they, most of them are dye based and they react well to bleach and they react well with water so we can thin them down as well. Um, for those of you who are doing Inktober this year, 
um, I've decided that I'm doing a range of made up insects. Um, the reason being is that if you have done ink up into before, it's about coming up with a concept that you can keep cracking out day after day after day for the full month and make sure that you come up with something nice. But of course you are time limited. Um, I'm sure that most of you have jobs to do or studies to pursue, homework to do, shopping to do, housework to do, you name it, it all gets in the way. So time is quite important. So what I've done is I said, I've gone for these insects because they are quick to do and I'm not spending more than 45 minutes on each illustration and that is tops. So some of them are probably a bit ropey and they come in at around about 20 minutes total. So, I mean, Claire, if, if, I, if I can just ask you just to put it I'm on. I'm going to camera, switch please. over. And I'm, yeah. I'm just going to say, Nick, having seen them, none of them are ropey at all. Um, and you well, call I, them a bestiary? Is that, I, is the, have I it's said a, it's that a, correctly? It's a, it's a, I, I've called it a bestiary of- um, Bestiary, okay. Of, of just insects. So, so this one here is, for those of you doing it, is, is called crabby. And it's basically a beetle bait background with obviously some crab claws on so it's been um, made into a little bit of a monster but the nice thing about this one is that you've got this lovely uh, sheen and you can even pick out some different bits of shimmer and of course it's important to see these in a really strong light so you get those beautiful metals but oh there you go and as you can see that's just from two inks um, and I'm going to show you how to do that very very shortly um, coming back to the concept idea of Inktober, you can see that I've just got I've just got three bugs here. I put these up on my website, so if you do need some inspiration um, and you want to have a go at this, then you can just download and just copy these. But the interesting thing is that beetles seem to have six legs, spiders have eight. Um, I know someone's going to ask about can we do a centipede or a millipede, the answer is no, they've got far too many legs, so we're not doing them. Um, so yeah, we can just make these sort of shapes and they are, um, they're very simple to do. And of course they are symmetrical. So what you've got on one side, you've pretty much got on the other. They don't have to be identical, but you can get away with a little bit of, um, shall we say artistic license with the legs and, and, and the little bits of fine detail. And we'll go through that. In a, in a while. Um, tonight we're going to be using um, Diamine Garland, which is a shimmer sheen. It's in the red series. So this was one of the releases from Diamine last year. You can use any shimmer ink or shimmer sheen ink that you want. So long as it's, it's quite heavy and rich, it'll be fine. Now, the other thing I'm going to use with this is a standard ink just as a shiner, which just goes underneath as a base color. And I'm using something called Florida Blue, which is a very um, cheap diamine inks, 30 mil, and it's, um, it's a standard ink. So we've got shimmer, sheen, and standard all together. So if you want to dig out your inks and you want to do something else with them, then we're gonna do that now. Okay, the other ink that I've got here is just a, is, is, is I've just got my ink here, but this, a, a darning black or a, any black will do. We're just gonna water this down just to put a bit of shading in beforehand. So that is all we're going to need on the ink side. Tools, we've got a number six paintbrush here. I'm using a rigger brush here, but if you've got a really fine number two or something like that to do some fine detailing, then that's fine. And I've got a very cheap noodler's creeper pen here, which I can abuse. So I'm not gonna get upset if anything goes wrong. Do not use anything expensive. Um, that'll be very, very sad if that goes wrong. And so please don't use fountain pens that are worth a lot of money. This is cheap and I just use this for my art. Um, what else do we need? And Nick, when you've hey, got a question already, when you're yeah. using bleach solution, yeah. Do you only use a dip pen for bleach or how, how I, do you do that? I'm using this one, the noodles for this for tonight. And here yeah. we are, that's a little pot of bleach, it's tiny. It's tiny bit of bleach, as you can see, that's how I keep my bleach. 
Um, it's just an old ink bottle which I've used. Um, it's it's safe. It's got a, it's not going to fall over. Um, it's best to use this in a ventilated space. I've got a window open behind me, or just in front of me. Um, and you don't need very much of it. So don't put your life in danger. And obviously, if you've got small children around you or people who probably do need a bit of um, overseeing, just be mindful that, that bleach is, is not, it's not, it, it, it is a, a destructive agent. So um, be, 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 be wary of that. And is that um, just, some, again, someone just asked, is that bleach and water or just pure household bleach? Anything in particular? Um, right, this is Domestos and I have increased the potency tonight. So I'm looking around about an 80% bleach, maybe 20% water because we're using a much thicker solution of bleach. So obviously I wouldn't want to use that on a, on a, on a very thin ink. If I'm using a shading ink, I'm probably using 80% water, 20% bleach. So that's how you go about um, varying your strengths of bleach, it's just by adding water, depending on how thick the ink you're trying to work into is going to be. Okay. Um, as I said, we are going to do some other techniques tonight. So I've just got little sheets of kitchen towel here because I am going to be taking um, areas of the ink away from the finished art. Um, and I'll be showing you how I'm doing that just to give more effect and patterning, etc. Um, I think that's pretty much it. The paper I'm using is just a, a thick cartridge paper. So you can probably use that in a sketchbook, sketchbook paper. It, it's, 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 you know, you don't have to spend a fortune on this. Um, and also the size that I work at is quite important too. So if I get one of these little creatures here, you can see that they're not enormous they're just a couple of inches so i'm not working at a huge scale and there's a reason for this is because i'm going to be wetting the area first to get the chromatography working and get the paper nice um, so i can blend the inks all together etc um, and i don't really want to use a, a massive uh, surface because um if if it's forced, if the if the water dries too quickly then you know it's, it's going to be irritating so it's good to work within um an illustration size that, that's suitable for what we're going to do okay right claire are we ready to start i th i think we're ready to start there's a couple more questions uh okay. coming through so just want to reassure everybody that you will get a recording and anyone that's registered if you've got any friends that have signed up tonight and they can't attend anyone that's registered will get the recording of the session so nick we've got some people saying they're furiously taking notes because they're so they're so interested in what and what and what you're saying right. um okay. and then we've All also right. had a had a question about um whether you use uh, bent or drawing nibs so different types of nibs but perhaps we can come on to that as we go as we go through i'm using a fountain pen for all of the highlights tonight, I'm going to be using that Noodles Creeper pen. And do you ever use anything different? Do you use uh, for some of your other creations in terms of nib types? Yes, I'll show you, I'll, before we start, I'll show you this. This is something that I've been working, working with recently. This, you probably have seen, I don't know whether you may have done or may not, this is a Kakamori nib. It's relatively new. Um, it's just into a, I've got a, you can get it's a standard sort of nipple. This is the Kakamori one, it's quite nice. Um, the beauty of this is that um, it's not a flex nib, but you can get fine lines. Um, and you can get thicker lines. Um, I'll show you something that I've worked. This is something that I did recently, which just shows how you can use these new um, octopus pigment inks. So with this pen, I'm literally just going in and creating these little trees and I can get, by holding it on its side, I can get a really nice block in here. And by holding it in a vertical position, I can get some really nice fine lines too. They're not as hairline as using a zebra G nib, but um, it, it's just a lovely thing to use. Um, so that's one nib that I use a lot. That's the fountain pen nib, that's a flex nib. 
which is on the noodles, which I use an awful lot. And the other thing that I use, which I haven't got them rigged off at the moment, but you can see these nibs, these are zebra G nibs. That, that's the really nice flex nib, and you'll get a really fine line with those. Once again, it's another, another dip in option if you want. Those are the three pens that I use in my art at the moment, um, as well as lots of brushes. Lovely, yeah. thank you. Okay. If you like, we can talk about those. Um, the I've got some stuff here, if you want to talk about that a bit later, to do with the combination of um, dye-based inks and pigment-based inks. If you want to talk about that, I can show you what. Yes, let's, see, let's, yeah. let's do that a bit later. Let's see how we, how we get right. on with the time. Yes. Okay. Nice. Right. Okay. Well, this, I've already drawn the shape of a spider in pencil on my um, cartridge paper. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, is go for my Florida blue. Um, it's going to get that ready. So I'm just going to wet this surface here. Okay. Um, I want it to be quite wet. It's just the main body area that I'm interested in at the moment. And if anyone hasn't got bleach, Nick, I know in the in the workshop we the first workshop we did with you last year, we used water. Um, but are there any other alternatives if there's anyone that can't use bleach for any reason? Um, I don't know where, you, I don't know whether you still sell bleach pens, um, those correction pens that you can just um, erase ink with when you make a mistake. That'd be just as useful. Good question. I'm just going to have a look, or maybe Anna okay. will have a have a have a look because we've right. got some ink eradicator stuff. Yeah, let let's just have a quick okay. check. Now you can see that the body of the spider is quite wet, so just at the edges now, I'm just going to start adding. This, this base color. Um, I said, this is just a nice little shiner to add to, to what we're gonna be doing. Okay, so that's that in position. Just going to sort of just put that on the way a bit like that. Okay, then with the corner of a bit of um, blotting, not blotting paper, with this kitchen towel, I'm just going to take some of that excess out. What I want to make sure is that the um, this area in here is, is quite wet because what I want to do now is as that's slowly drying, I want to get get the garland out. So I'm just going to that'll do that. Okay. Now, as that's drying just a tiny bit, what I want to do is just take maybe a little bit of the blue from here and just start to put a tiny bit of colour in these legs. So when I go over with the with the with the um, fine lining at the end, I've just got a tiny bit of blue coming through. As you can see, I'm working quite quickly. Um, so it's not taking me very much time. That's enough. I can now put the Florida Blue away now. I'm not going to be using any more of that. So that's gone. So now we're going to just take the garland 
as you can see, the shimmer would all be at the bottom of the bottle. Um, so we just want to give that a little bit of shake. What I tend to do at this stage is where it's dimpled, I'm just going to pop that back upwards. Now I'm going to go I'm into my garland now. You can see that that's bleeding nicely from the edges into the body. What I want to try and do is create a little bit of depth here. So I just want to give it some sort of three dimensional quality. I'm only just painting in from the very, very edges. So there's still a fair amount of water on there, even though you've soaked some up, just, just to enable that spray. Yeah, it, 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 we're, we're yeah. enabling this. It, this is very much a watercolour technique. Yeah. Uh, it's just uh, enabling it to, to blend. With, and you can see why I'm using that shiner, that, that, that um, Florida blue underneath. Okay. And um, if those little legs are a bit wet, that's nice to have a little bit coming out here like that. Now, that is done. What we, if you want to add just a little, just a few little spots like that, you can do. But that is done. What we have to do now is, is just let that dry. And that will take a while. You can cheat it if you want to by using a hairdryer, but if you do dry it, in that way, what will happen is um, you won't get some of this lovely chromatography happening. So, and it's quite nice to have that in the final effect. So I'm going to put that away now and let that dry. And like magic, I've got another one here, which I did earlier. Because that's proper, how- Proper blue pizza, well done. It's proper blue pizza, yeah. So that's how it should look. And what I've done, um here just before i started i literally just put in a bit of a um a shadow i literally just took this i mixed that with some water so it was probably about 20 to 20 to 30 percent gray as opposed to black and i'm just using that around those little spindly legs as just a bit of a drop shadow okay now this is where it gets interesting um because what we're going to be doing now is to try and get some effects like we've got here. So I want to get the colours coming through. So what we'll do is I'm just using water now and I'm using um, some kitchen towel. So I'm just going to just do a little dot, a few dots of water. I think you can probably see that. You can just about see that water drop, can't you? We can, yeah, we can just about see as you're doing it. Yeah. You can see that. So I'm just going to, I'm just painting in just clean, clear water, just a few spots. As I said, because these, um, these inks are just so thick, It's just like a bit like watercolour, but you probably won't get as dramatic effect using this watercolour technique as we're going to get. But I'm just letting that just stay on the surface for a little bit, just to sort of wet the air underneath. Okay. Right, so let's just see what we can get. So I'm just taking that ink out now. Can you see that? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. So we're getting some nice effects on there. So we're taking the ink out. You can see how heavy that ink is. And it, you know, that's 50% there. Now what we can do now is go in there again. So by using this, we can get a lot of texture. So if you don't want to use bleach, just use dots of water and keep at it and just slowly remove that ink. Give that another go. Okay, 
Amazing. And so you keep, you keep going with that. Is it going to you could bring more colour? That layer and remove? Yes, it will do. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get a bit more area of um, some more detail of the of the spider. So I want to sort of I mean, what, what we're basically doing here is we're just literally patterning. So I'm going to take a bit more out of here. Okay. Lovely. Okay. So it's entirely up to you how far you take that. So that's giving me a, a nice little base to work on. Um, for my, my highlighting. So what I'm going to do now is give that garland another good shake because you do find that that shimmer does, can you see that blue shimmer? It's already sunk to the bottom. Yeah, always so what shake. I want to do, yeah, so I'm going to give it another good shake. I'm not going to fill my pen. I'm literally just going to dip it. I'm going to just dip the nib in. That's what I'm going to do. And then with the legs, it's just about, just going to do the legs first. So it's just about having a bit of fun. And you see, I'm just leaving, I'm just going around the edges. But with the light source coming from here, what I want to do is to try and make, probably following the, the patterns, is just make it slightly heavier on one side. So and these can be quite uneven. Sorry. Go on. No, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. There are a few questions about, about paper yes. um, and different types of paper. So you're using cartridge paper. Yes. Yes, I am. Can, can you it, use bulk standard printer paper? Question no. coming. No. No, you can't <laughs> use print you can't use print paper for print. That's the stuff that you actually print magazines on or anything like that. No, it, it, that's totally inappropriate, unfortunately. It has to be um, an art stock. Yeah. Um, you know. Someone's saying they've used um, paper that's recommended for marker pens. You can use um, layout pad paper if you want yeah. to. You, it's, I don't think it's going to be as good. Um, I mean, it, it, it's because it's too thin, really, and it will buckle. Quite, it'll, it'll buckle quite quite um dramatically as well but um, so some, you know, it something will work. with a bit of weight and a smooth uh, surface essentially yeah because i mean we are you know you can see already i'm just really getting into this now you know um just you just want to put a little few little hairs on here okay and you're dipping the pen is that in the garland yeah i'll show you um yeah I'm literally just dipping, using my pen just to dip maybe that much in there and just taking the excess off. I'm just using my fountain pen, yeah. As you can see, we're, we're, we're scooting along here. When, you know, 10 minutes so far. So we're cracking on with it. The time's going well. We're still within our, in our range. And what's your nib size on that pen? It's very fine. Um, this is just an, a, a, this, I think there's only one nib that comes with the Noodles Creeper pen. Okay. It's tiny. It's just a tiny. It does look very fine. Yeah, it's just a, it's, as I said, it's, it's, it's very cheap. So it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter, but it doesn't matter to me as much as maybe to some people that, you know, it is disposable. But believe it or not, this is over five years old, so it's still going strong.
Okay, so that's half the legs done. We'll just get the other ones in now. Don't forget, spiders are quite hairy, so they have little bits of tufts of hair coming off them. Of course, this is, this is the, the line work stage where I'm just putting in bits of detail. So whereabouts, where, where the head joins, you know, that can, that can go in now. Down here. And maybe a bit of patterning down here. And the area here. So we've been reliably informed that the nib creeper only comes with a flex nib and it it's a fine medium in terms of size. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, they're, and, very, they're very good. I like them. And yeah. uh, and someone's asking whether or not hot pressed watercolour paper would work. Yeah, I use that a lot. It's quite expensive for, for mm. doing something as, you know, sort of, as I said, it, yeah, it's lovely. If you can afford that, that's great. I said, I am making this up as I go along a lot of this. I'm, you know, I'm sure that most spiders don't look like this at all, but you know, it's just good fun. You know, I'm not making sure, it doesn't matter if one leg's different to the other. As you can see, I'm, I'm not very consistent. I do dart about on my paintings, which is quite, you know, quite nice. Right. Now, the, these spiders, they do have quite a lot of sort of dots on them, the sort of texture in their body. So it's quite nice to put this, to put this in now. And then we can finish off finally with some bleach. Fast, you see, it's fast. It is fast. That has a lovely, that's very simple, but it's adding a bit of, it's staying some depth and some layering. Yeah, it and it's really it's, nicely. It's good to put a few dots around where the leg joins. I don't know why, but you know, I looked at a spider the other day and they seem to have a lot going on around these joints. There we go. So that's pretty much the detailing done. So I'm going to just give that pen a little bit of a rinse. Now as that's drying, you, it's, it's a difficult one to show, but if you get a really strong yeah. kitchen down lighter on this, you won't just see the, um, the shimmer. You'll see... Um, it doesn't quite show in this light because I haven't see some, top some pinks around the edges as yeah, well. So see a bit the more the colour coming through. Yeah, that's right. There's some sheening there. No. But I mean, there is some shimmer down the bottom here as well. You can just about see it. But I said, if you've got some strong yeah. lighting, this really does ping. It's just beautiful. Unfortunately, the way we're doing this, it's just it, you can't really get the full benefits of it. But you can see some there, can't you? Some yes, shimmer. you can definitely see that. You know, and um, you see lots of sheen. It's it's lovely. It's lovely, and of course, it's it's much sharper. Right. The final thing we're going to do is um, I'm just going to dry this off. Is I'm just going to put some highlights on. Right. So that's that's my little thing of bleach. I'm just going to just dip my pen in there. Don't don't. Don't um, charge it. I've always got mine twisted down into the actual main body of the pen. Yeah. I'm literally just dipping it. So um, 
you don't need more than that. Right, so I'm just going to go into the You may well find that the bleach doesn't particularly like the, um, it won't work on some of the really heavy surfaces. So it'll only really appear on the ones that we've taken out. And it wouldn't work on the darker parts then, where you've got more, a bit more. Well, biggest, yeah, I mean, it, you, it might, you might be lucky. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll try, but I mean, it is it is heavy. It, these mm. these Sheena, Sheena machines are really dark inks. It'll probably work here on the... That's great. You can see it developing. Yeah, you just need to. Doing. Fantastic. And you don't find that the bleach ever damages the paper in any way? I think we're, we're just using so little. I would, you know, long term it probably does, but I mean, I, I don't think you're going to notice anything too, too much. Okay, and then just a little bit of bleach on the on the leg because they're quite although they're quite hairy and dark it's quite nice to have just the, uh, the odd highlight on here just to bring it alive That's pretty much it. That's great. That's pretty, much, that's pretty much it. Can you hold it up to the camera for us, please? Let's see if we can do a close up, a little bit of the, yeah, can, the bleach yeah. impact. Oh yeah, lovely. Yeah. And was it entirely dry when you were adding those those bits? Were they entirely dry when you added the bleach? Yeah, but I mean, it just it, you know, it's up to you. Um, you can do other things if you want. You can. Um, you know, add some bleach. If you add bleach while it's wet, it will spread. So you won't get, um, it won't be as sharp. It's a shame, this camera, it, it's not as sharp. I mean, you know, the actual finished thing is a lot sharper and you can see quite a bit of a, the shim machine coming through, which is a bit of a shame, but. We're catching, I think we're catching it with a bit of light as you're yeah. moving it around a little bit. You get a bit of that effect, yes. Yeah, you can see yeah. that. Yeah, see, lovely. It just came into focus there. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much how I'm using these heavy shimmers and shimmers. And I'll show you some other ones that I've done from, from October, if you wish. Yes, please. Um, I've, follow, I've followed you, so I've seen them popping up much to my delight as you've been creating them. And I okay. think it would be really lovely inspiration right. for well, everyone. I'll, you can see that they're all a similar size. I'll, I can talk about the inks as we go through. It won't take long. So there you are, it's, it's very quick, it's um, 25 minutes and, and really for most people, if they're trying to do Inktober for the full um, 30, 31 days, that's pretty much all the time we've got, you know, because they're also time, um, aren't we? We're time stressed really, we just don't have enough time. So yeah, it's about coming up with a concept, allowing yourself a bit of creative freedom if you are really time pushed so you can just crack something out. And uh, that's it really, that is it. So it's coming up with a good idea that will last for 31 um, twists, if you like. <laughs> yeah. Love that. Otherwise I think, you know, if you, if you go too detailed or it goes too big, one day like a Sunday is great. You've got three hours to kill, you can do something amazing. Back to work on Monday, you're stuffed. So, you know, you just have to sort of work out how you're gonna use your time as best as possible. Now, 
what the nicest thing to do with some of these to get the full effect of these things once again it's about getting them into a, a really nice light so if you've got a down lighter somewhere in the kitchen or wherever um you twist this around till you get the perfect you know the i mean i'm getting a really nice effect here but you are well, you're seeing more color as you're moving it around and more shimmer yeah. lovely um so the nice thing to do is to get your uh, mobile phone and to photograph it with the uh, where you get all of that shimmer and uh, sheening effect. It, it, and then the best thing to do is to use the color adjustment within the camera on the phone and you will have a setting that goes from warm to cool. Now, if you're using uh, a downlighter light, um, LCD, whatever, um, it will turn, it will make the image slightly darker and very yellow. So if you go to your um, exposure button, just bring it up by 15 to 20%, and that will give you a much more, a fairer rendition of what it looks like. Then um, with the warmth setting, go from warm to cool by about another 20% so that the background becomes white as opposed to yellow. And then you just with the definition slider, give it a bit more punch and then you're there. It'll, you'll see that's what I've done with, with mine on my Instagram account. You can see that I've literally just done what I've done here, photographed them nicely and pop them up on the, on the social media. Fabulous. And okay. how, how, do you, how do you keep your artwork? So how light fast? Is, are these going to be? Do they fade over time? Does the bleach have any impact mm. on that? It's not so much the bleach, but certainly um, fountain pen dye-based inks are fugitive. So yeah, they, they don't really like a lot of light. That's that's for sure. Um, yeah, they will fade. So I mean, the best thing to do is, is is I say is to photograph them really nicely so that you've got to keep safe. So if they do fade over time, you know what they look like. And certainly if you want to do lots, if you want to get prints of them, they, they, they print, particularly Gicle, if you go for a really high resolution print, they print out beautifully. I mean, the, the quality is, is phenomenal. But sadly, dye-based inks are fugitive. With these heavy shim machines though, they, they don't fade as much as some of the lighter inks, some of the sort of pinks and orange standard inks, which, which, which fade quite quickly in strong light. So some of these deep, um shin machine inks that they've got a lot of life in them they'll just um, last last longer because of the density i'm assuming. yeah i mean I've, I've been you know some of the robert osters for example and some of these darnings i mean i've done some work with them and they, uh, as far as i can see they haven't faded yet but you know i've used it, it depends what the color is if you're using yellows and pinks for example that they they can um they can they can fade quite quickly unfortunately and is there anything... the best thing to... sorry oh, sorry no just going to say, is there any, you might perhaps about to say it, is there anything you can use to fix the, the, the artwork? So if you're particularly proud of something, you really want to keep it pristine. Can you well, put if you're anything using, over yeah. it, protect it? Yeah, if you're using standard inks, you can use, um, particularly if you're using CMYK stuff, which, you know, I, I do mix, quite a lot of mixing just with CMYK standard inks. I sometimes spray them with um, something called a Giant fixative which is what you would use for um, photographs. If you're using a printer to print out some family photographs, you can, you can um, stick some UV resistant spray on, which is what this is. And then you can, you can put them in a frame, in a picture frame and put, and put them on the mantelpiece or table, whatever you're gonna do. Likewise, I mean, these are dye based, just the same as those printer inks are. Um, and I use that, and it, and it, and it is it, it is good. It, it is UV resistant, and um, it does work. However, if you're using shimmer sheen and you put the Gian stuff on there, it kills the sheen. It will make the sheen black, and the shimmer is is, is just dulled completely. So oh, tricky. This is, I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. But you probably get away with these just on their own because because they're much heavier. You may well get away with not as much fade. So that's that. And I guess the key thing is, as you say, photograph it and perhaps then it's time to do another piece of art. Yes, I mean, it's nice to, you know, I mean, just put tuck these away out of the light and just go and visit them now and again. Yeah. 
you still got the original and, and they don't, as long as you keep them out, out of the light, they're, they're fine. It's strong light they don't like. If you put them in, su in sunlight, they, they will fade quite fast, unfortunately. Can you say the name of that the spray again that you mentioned, please? Someone's just yes. asked about that. I don't know if it's one that we stock, but I'm sure it's widely available. It's G H I A N T, Giant. Gant. Lovely, thank you. It's a UV um, sealant, and I use the matte stuff for stuff that I, I said when I use standard inks or I'm mixing standard inks together, it seems to work okay. It's as I said. If, if you, I did a, a, a really lovely um, portrait not so long ago, and I, I got a phenomenal. I was I think it was I was using um, one of those Darmy heavy inks, and uh, yeah, I got a phenomenal sheen on it. But I sprayed it, and it, and it just went black, which is a great shame. But you know, that's it. You live and learn. You do. So, do you want to have a look at, I'll, I'll just show you some of these then, um, if I remember what they are. So, this was using Robert Oster's inks. They, they're pretty good. They won't fade too much. And I think the main highlighting ink was um, one of the Darmine um, Series 2 inks. I think that's called Solstice. So you've got a nice... Actually, it doesn't look too bad on here, actually. Yeah, you can see the silver shimmer coming through. It's obviously much, uh, <laughs> I can say this is a bit. There you go. So that's lovely. quite nice. This one is one of my faves. This is- I winter. love that colour. Yeah, this is Winter Diamond Winter Miracle. Um, and that's all from one ink. It didn't need to anything more than that. And of course, when you add the bleach dots, it goes to this sort of lovely bluey colour. So that's all with uh, one ink. It's, um, that is yeah. amazing, isn't it? You've got that green green sheen. Yeah, perfect. A little bit of blue, bit of blue shimmer in here. You can see that blue, actually you can see that. There you are. That's all lovely metallic. So yeah, that's all from one ink. So that's, that's, that was quite successful. Um, that's the little scallop crab, beetle, whatever, with the hairy legs and stuff. So that's, I think that's using a selection of Robert Oster's, just a few blues in there. Lovely. Um, this was using, I think there were my inks here. I used my inks on this one. Apart from the lining ink, I think that was using Hell's Bells, which is a, quite a heavy German exclusive with a really heavy green. You can see that green sheen. Yeah, that's a nice colour. Yeah. Love that. And then this one is a lovely one. This is a Cult Pens exclusive. Oh, thank you. It's a Cult Pens exclusive. It's, it's a by Vinter Inks and it's called Greenwich. And I have to say it is absolutely gorgeous. You can see the beautiful bluey green sheen, great depth of tone, and it's a nice purple. And you can do a lot with it. So that's, that's a nice stable colour, that. Um, this, you can, sadly you can't see this, but this is That's all made up of Darmin. Be, before Darmin did the ink vent calendars, they brought out three series of shimmerings, of which I've got all of them, and I just dug these out. And, and they're still, you know, they're still very potent. You can still see the shimmers, they're lovely. And they, someone's just said that it looks like velvet, it does. It really looks very textured. That it does, it does, it, it's amazing. The thing is with fountain penning and doing this sort of art is, is it's unlike any other medium. It really is unlike any other medium. And you don't really know what you're gonna get until um, it's finished. That's a lovely darling called, I think it's Happy Holidays. This is the fav my favourite of the ones you've you've done, I think, in terms of the colour used. I love this. So that has got, I used my red, the Desert Rose, for just a, a base colour. And then I went on top of it with Happy Holidays. And um, you can see there's a beautiful pinky violet metallic sheen in there, shimmer, with this lovely green sheen. Incredible. It's lovely. It's, it's lovely stuff. So you could do you could do a spider like that. 
pick up one of those spiders, download that, do one like that. Um, this is using another darning, which is um, a Hong Kong exclusive, but I think you, I don't know whether you can get hold of this, but it's, um, it's called Hong Kong, it's called Kong Girls and Kong Guys. And the Kong Girls is this beautiful, um, you can just see that blue shimmer in there. It's this pinky purple with a shimmer. And the Kong Guys is this really gorgeous blue with this heavy, deep bronze sheen. They work well together. I've got another one of, of those to show but as well. Paul, put that one back on next. Sorry, just had a question. I think it's related to this one. To get the larger pale bleach patches, how, are you using a paintbrush then? How are yes. you achieving the sort of bigger, whiter, paler parts? Yes, I'm just I'm just letting it dry and going in again. And I said, I'm just using all of my brushes, by the way, are synthetic hairs. They've all got synthetic hairs. And as soon as I've used the bleach, they get washed. So it's straight into the wash pot. To wash the bleach out but don't use animal hair brushes because they'll just melt you'll be very angry and cross so always use synthetic brushes so that is using congos this is that's quite rich this is um something that you stop and i thoroughly recommend these this is sailor ink studio um, and I can't remember the numbers of these, but you can find it on my Instagram account. I, I do note everything that's there. So you can see it, it's, it's very strong, beautiful yeah. chromatography. And how many inks have you used for this one? How that many is, I've used two. Um, Incredible. I've, I think I, I used a Brandy Dazzle, which was a shimmer ink, along with this Sailor Ink Studio. I can't remember the number of it. It's on my, it'll be on my um, Instagram account. Okay. Great. And I know we've got lots of, lots of customers who get great feedback on those ink, uh, Sailor Ink Studios. Yes, no they're amazing. very, very good. This is a, a, another shimmer machine. Um, she's got a lovely, you can just about see that beautiful shimmer in there. And again, I use that solstice for the line for the line work, so that's quite nice. That was a the concept was um, forget, so I just did that sort of dragonfly with a, a forget me not on there. Now this is one of my favourite inks. This is um, I think this is Robert, which is uh, got this um, um, this amazing deep red, deep magenta with this incredible green sheen absolutely brilliant so um robert and maureen you've they're yours again cult pens yes. robert and maureen i use robert and maureen for all of my workshops they are a perfect pair to have if you want the ultimate sheening inks then robert and maureen mm -hmm. are the ones to go for they are amazing lovely and someone's just found your instagram so it's sailor ink studio 473 that's oh, it. I think I might be Anna posting. Sorry, Anna. Um, and uh, the 473 and 873 with some bleach highlights and the Colt Pens exclusive from Waringal is the Merchant of Venice, which is the black ink with the gold shimmer, which is yeah, a lovely one. Yeah, the Waringals are, are, to be honest, the Waringals are quite hard to use for art, actually. Um, this is using, I think this is Dominant Industries. These are the, these are the your, once again, I don't know why you're getting so much coverage here. I think it's because <laughs> they're on my desk at the time. But these are really love this dominant. Um, I've never used it before. These it is using their shins. But you can see there's some great chroma going on here as well. And I used, um, I think it's called Harvest Moon and Autumn Sunlight. Very nice indeed. Lovely. They are very, very pretty. Pretty inks. Very nice shimmers and sheens over. Um, this isn't particularly pleasant, I know. <laughs> so you've definitely got the Halloween thing going on there, the scare factor with that one. That was supposed to be a chicken on his back. Um, that's just, that's using solstice for the line work. And I think just a standard red and orange. I forget, I think that's probably darn line. Yeah, very simple, another simple one. 
um, very quick. I forget. Is that, I don't think there's so any... many inks. That's two so, inks, and so I can't remember time. what they are. It's beyond the on the on the um, beyond the Instagram account. Quink, Quink and Bleach on the Instagram account. I don't know what that was, but you can see that. I mean, you can see that because it's the ink has you know we've washed it down to about 50 percent you can see the bleach really does have a neon effect on that it's quite nice that's fabulous yeah so it really does burn into that um this was using some herbin which i quite like using those herbin shimmers they were six they were the 1640s i think the ones are 1760, whatever. Um, it's a gold, it's, it's a violet L'Oreal, I think. And oh, I can't remember the other one. But anyway, there's a golden and silver shimmer. Really lovely. And you can I see- I think, really... is it the violet? I'm going to say Imperial. I don't know how- No, it's, it's not. It's not, it's, it's not that new one. Okay. It's the L'Oreal one. I think it's the L'Oreal mm. one. You're testing Anna now because she's she's looking on your Instagram and trying to find the right um, product details to share with everybody as you're going yeah. through. Um, this one is a nice shimmer. That's Brandy Dazzle and another shimmer. You can see it's a lovely gold. That's lovely. Yeah. Fantastic. It haze very well. It, you know, you can see that with the, with the highlighting, it, it worked really well. I think that's Dragon's Blood. Which I use for the line work, but yeah, that behaved really well. Got some really nice detail on that. Yeah, I wasn't sure about this one. Cheeky one. Yeah, that's Brandy Dazzle again um, with Golden Sands, but it didn't work as it didn't turn out too too well, really. I don't know. You do get off days. Golden Sands. That's another um, shimmer ink, which is some. Um... And someone's asked, I know, I think we asked you this last year as well, but how many bottles of ink do you have? Um, hundreds. Do you, do you actually know? No, I don't. I've got lots. I do have lots. And uh, I do sort of just, it depends how the workload's going. If I'm really busy doing the corporate graphics, and I'm really up against it. And of course, I can't do much work because I've just got to crack on with what's in front of me. But as soon as I get a free a free moment, I will go into the cupboard and I'll, oh, I'll, I'll show you at the end if you want. It's full of them. But they all, you know, I've tested most of them and they're all, you know, every ink is lovely, really. Every ink's lovely. This is, um, I, don't, I forget what this is. I forget what this is now. Maybe Anna can have a look. This is, this is so many because it's, as you say, October. It's a long month. You're nearly, yeah. you've nearly made it to the end. I know. I can't remember what this That's is. Lovely, I really enjoyed though. doing this. I really love this one. And um, mm. yeah, you've got some shimmer. You've got some really nice stuff happening with the she with the sheening, with the green sheen. This could be Darling Winter Miracle, actually. It could be Darling Winter Miracle. It, it looks familiar. It's a great ink, that Darling Winter Miracle. If you want one shimmer sheen. That's the one. Fabulous stuff. Wow, you've chosen one. Yeah, that, that is that is something special, that one. This is, um, you can see the sheen on that, can't you? you yeah, can see that beautiful. That I can't remember what it is. You'll have to look at the... <laughs> Basically, <laughs> everyone needs to go and have a look at Nick's in yeah. Instagram and, oh, this uh, was, and have a this little tour lovely. of all this the This was lovely. This was... This was for something called booger, which I think is the American for a bogey or something, not, not very pleasant. I didn't want to do something like that. So it, this ended up looking like a hot, but it was just lovely to use. Um, I used Darning Kelly Green on this. And then I did the, the highlights with Ivy Black, I think. And there's a neon green in there as well. So I had a gold shimmer and a silver shimmer mixing on top of this Kelly Green. And I was really pleased with this. I thought it was lovely. That is lovely. Yeah, I really enjoyed doing that. It turned out really nicely. It was just, it looks like a hop in a sort of funny sort of way. Um, right, we're getting near the end now. I won't keep you too long. This is using Kong Guys and Kong Girls. Now that Kong Girls, you can see, if you add the water to it, it really does bleed beautifully. 
Um, and then you've got the con guys in the middle with the fairy outline. And the bleach just loves this stuff. And you can see that there's a gorgeous mm. blue shimmer just in the, in the wingtips there. That's lovely. Yeah. But it's, this is just shimmer. it. Those two go really well together. They are very complementary. Um, you, you know, I, I, I do like those that, that con girls, con guys. Um, we're nearly there now. This is using something I can't give you the name just yet because it's actually from the ink bank calendar. You can see. <gasps> So this it's is a, this is a an exclusive. It, so we just exclusive. shipped the ink vent Kansas. So if anyone's yeah. raided, the, um, I'm not going to tell you what it is. What well, I'm telling you what it is, but that is just this is just gorgeous. It's gorgeous. That's all I'm going to say. And ah, it's all from one dun, ink. Dun, and it, it's, it's all from one ink. So you've got a great tonal range. It's a gorgeous color. Um, yeah, it's good. Fabulous. And I think. Um, we're keen oh, to have a little a little tour of the cupboard if that's all possible. Right. That's it. <laughs> there you are. That's Sailor Ink Studio. So you Very can nice. see with the bleach, you get all those pinks and stuff just out of those two colours. It's just gorgeous. Um, Colt pens again. That that's the going through. That's with the Robert Oster Lime Regis. That pinkiness, and then you've got those two that's dominant really industries helpful. in there. It is. It's it's lovely. I can't, it, the cool. machines are so subtle with those dominant industries, I can't really show you, but you can see it on the Instagram account. Um, all right, so that's it really. I've got one more, this is today's, that was quite a good fun. Oh. That's Sailor Ink Studio, and I've got this shoe in there, and I think, oh, I'll tell you what that is. That's a new one from Hong Kong called Endel. Something rather nice. Mm, it's actually nice. gold. It's actually gold. This shimmer is gold. But when you add it on top of say the ink studio, whatever that number was, you said, you get a rose. You get a rose gold. And I think it looks absolutely stunning. It does look lovely. And it's, and that is those two are a great combo. I'll tell you that much. And this is tomorrow's. This is the snack beetle. <laughs> <laughs> And that is just using standard inks with a bit of bleach. And the line work's actually done with another one from this, this year's, um, uh, the actual line work, just the outside, but it was done with another ink, which I use as my handwriting. I can't tell you what it is, but it's in the ink vent calendar this year and it is, it's lovely. That is There's glorious. A, if you're gonna get a present this year, this year's ink, calendar has got some real killers in it it's absolutely fantastic i'm, a, I'm not going to say any more <laughs> but it is brilliant <laughs> that's a good a good one thank you <laughs> brilliant so you want a tour of the ink cupboard do you i think i think everyone would like just a little look if possible all right okay just all right. before well, we go for anyone that can hang on i know some people are having to go right. but if anyone that that wants to have a little look and perhaps a little bit of MB. Oh, it's very organised, right. Nick. Okay. Um, right, so there we go. You've got some big, uh, what, at the back there is all my, there's my inks, which I, um, there's inks on top. They're all full of ink. There's lots of inks, all different bottles, which I use for my workshops. Um, in here, God, there we go. It's very tidy. Um, that'll give you an idea. That is a box that's full of diamond inks. Absolutely chocker. That's all full in there. Um, these are my ink samples in here. So they're all sacked. Um, I think there's 1600 vials in there. You see that? Oh, wow. I won't get them out and disturb them. Um, so that's. Oh, and there's another one. And here we've got some, if I move back, I've got some herbins at the top there, there's really nice. Lovely. Shimmer. You've got quite a bit of bouncing press building up there. There's a load of um, cult pen stuff in that box. Thank you. There's a load of stuff in there. <laughs> um, this is my Darmy shelf here. So that's all full of Darmy standard inks. And 
I've got a box of Robert Oster, which are my favourites. In fact, if Robert is, uh, you know, I'd love some more, Rob. They're fantastic. I mean, you know, they're incredible. You'll have so, to yeah, tell us what you, what you don't have um, in the way of Robert Oster, and we'll, we'll see what we can do. So, yeah, Rob, Rob, Rob's, you know, I, I, I can't deny it. His, 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 his I, well, as I said, all links are fantastic. Yeah. I do, I do, uh, I do like what he does. Yeah, they are. The snack, the snack beetle. The snack beetle, that's tomorrow. Love that's it. It's, Love it's it. very yummy. How, how marvellous. That's it. That's it. That's that's it. A lo the snack beetle is a lovely way to end just in time for dinner. Um, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much, Nick, as ever. That's amazing. And for anyone that didn't attend the workshop that we did with you, and it was last year, Nick, I can't quite believe it was, um, that is on our Cult Pens YouTube channel. So you can have a look at that one now um, and creating, we're creating some artwork last year, which is a lovely introduction. This has worked brilliantly very much as a follow on and, and what everyone can do next. So. Um, we will share the recording for today in a few days time and that will go up on our YouTube channel as well. So search Copens YouTube and you will find us, you will find last year's workshop and, and this one will go up very soon. But we will also email it to all of you who registered as well. So if anyone was following along with Nick, we would love to see your creations or if you've now been inspired to go and have a go, uh, then please share them with us because we love seeing uh, your artwork and we share them with everyone if you're happy for that to happen. So you can share those with us on social media. Um, we've got a hashtag Cult Pens Creative. Um, and we've also just been doing a little bit of a Halloween inspired challenge. It's not quite the Daily Beast uh, creation that Nick has been doing, but we're doing a Halloween. Um, and I'm supposed to wink when I say that, but, uh, uh, and it's got its own hashtag. So that's Hallow with Hello Inc. Uh, or just search for Cop Pens Creative. We've got three Halloween inspired uh, prompts, skeleton, uh, hocus pocus and writer's blood. And there will be, I think, some competition prizes at the end as well. Um, so you can also follow Nick as well. So we've mentioned um, uh, Quink and Bleach. So look Nick up on Instagram and you'll be able to see all the creations that Nick's done all, and, uh, and, and lots more. There's lots of beautiful artwork on there. Have a look at Nick's website as well, which is nickstuart.inc. Um, there's lots of product reviews, ink reviews on there, and lots more besides. And also I think Anna's posted already, but you can sign up for some of Nick's online courses. And I think Nick, there's 20% off at the moment if people get a bit of a wriggle on with that. So um, it's, that's really yes, good. Yes, it is, that's right, it is. A, I've put 20% off on the course at the moment. So yeah, Amazing. Get so if to... anyone wants to do another session, learn more, then uh, it's a great opportunity to do that. So as I mentioned, we've recorded. Uh, so we'll be sharing that with all of you via email the next few days. It'll go in our newsletter as well. So if you haven't already signed up to Panorama, do, because we post all, all things about workshops and our um, videos in there. So this is officially the end of our session. So thanks again, Nick. Um, amazing <laughs> as ever. And your passion is infectious. Well, so, thank you. For having me and thank you for everyone for tuning in it's, it's always great fun to spread the word definitely and hopefully we'll see lots of your artwork and lots of creations from everyone that would be amazing so i'm going to close the it. webinar now we'll just check and make sure i've answered all the questions we'll be around uh for another minute or two but for now uh that's it and please uh keep your eyes peeled on our social and in our newsletter for more workshops which will be coming up and i'm sure more news of nick as well because he keeps us up to date on what he's what he's doing so we can share more creations with you all. Thank you ever so much, everybody, and we'll see you all soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye.